When you're building the base of your shared patio or footpath in the garden, wouldn't it be nice that just under the slabs you're putting down, instead of soft fluffy soil that you have to dig all out and replace with type one, you came across a firm, strong material like this. Well, there is a way of doing it. Would you believe that this is actually soil from my garden? And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make yours the same so you can build straight off of it. Now that has got you thinking. Before we even talk about how to make soil go hard like this, it's worth looking at why we even need a good foundation to our paving in the garden. And to do that, I've got a bit of a mock-up. And it looks like this, and essentially, it's a cross-section from a base or a patio or a slab for your shed or footpath in your garden. Here I'm using blocks, but these could be pavers or even concrete. So the block at the top sits on maybe 15 millimeters of sand that I've put in just to make it flat. Then I've got 100 millimeters of graded crushed material that in this country we tend to call MOT type one. That's well compacted, although on my mock-up it's not very well compacted. And that's sitting on virgin soil or whatever you're gonna dig out in the garden. So why do we need this, what we call sub-base, underneath our top paving? Well, it does two things. First of all, if you end up with a point load, because Auntie Margaret's come round for a barbecue, essentially the bottom of the block is loaded with that point load. And sub-base, well-compacted sub-base, will spread that around about 45 degrees in all directions in like a conical shape. So before you know it, the load that's underneath the block is now being spread over a lot bigger area, something of which that the virgin soil can accept without deforming and starting to move. But secondly, even more important for light-loaded patios and paths, this layer here, because it's very well compacted, contains very little moisture. That means if it's raining hard, this section here never gets mushy, so the block will never move like it would on soil. And more importantly, when you go through the freeze-thaw cycle through the winter or multiple winters, this section will always stay as it is. Unlike if you didn't use it and you just laid your pavers on soil, as that soil freezes and expands and then contracts, before you know it, your pavers are all over the place and you're tripping up your patio like you see on something from Garden Rescue. So we do need this layer for those two reasons, both spreading the load and coping with that freeze thaw over the winter. So where does this type of soil come in? Well, if we could use this, instead of excavating all of this, disposing of this material, and then bringing this aggregate back in. That could save us a lot of time and effort. And this would essentially replace that layer. And you can do it. And in civil engineering and construction, we call it soil stabilization. And all that means is improving the strength of the soil that's there to the point where you can build from it, rather than having to cart it all away and replace it with stone. Now this process has been around for a long time, but it's increasing in popularity because as you can imagine, to cart away hundreds of truckloads of material from site and then bring in virgin stone from the quarry costs you time, money, and CO2 emissions. And you can use it in small areas, like a small car park, right up to big motorway projects. We used it in the construction of all the taxiways and aprons around Terminal 5 at Heathrow a long time ago, and that was maybe a 200 acre site. Now you can use different materials to make this happen. The most common is cement. And all it is to get to this point is mixing soil with cement. On the construction site, a predetermined thickness of cement is spread on the surface. And then a mixing machine, a bit like a large rotavator, mixes the cement with the soil and adds water, and then is compacted and spread to the right level. This reduces the moisture content and permeability and improves the bearing and shear strength. But as DIYs, we don't need to worry about any of that. All you need to know is the more cement you put in your soil, the harder it's gonna get. Now this is quite extreme, this is like a weak concrete. But to replicate type one, we'll need a lot less cement. Let's have a look at a recent project I did in the garden using this method. 
So just either side of my green wall, I've had my barrels sitting there for the last year and sitting on soil, they're not really level and also cutting the grass around them is becoming a bit of a pain. So I wanna put in some block work so they can sit nicely on that. And while I'm doing it, I'm gonna do just a little bit of a raised bed in front of the green wall just to finish off the bottom section. And I want those sleepers also to sit on blocks. So the project is essentially two to two and a half square meters of block work paving. So the first thing I do is to dig out enough soil so the blocks and the sand course underneath can end up sitting at around about the same level as the current ground. And this is where things change. Rather than taking out any more material, the base that I'm gonna put them on is gonna be this cement soil mixture. And the first thing I need is obviously to add some cement. It doesn't matter what type of cement you use. I'm just using a cheap bag of blue circle cement, which is maybe just over five pounds in the DIY shop. I'm aiming at around about a 10 or 15 millimetre thickness over this area, which if I'm mixing with around about 100 millimetres of soil is about a 10% dosage. Just like in many aspects of civil engineering and building, this isn't an exact science. So some areas are gonna have a little bit more than others. And the end result also depends on how well you mix that whole layer together. I'm aiming to dig 100 millimetres here, but it could be a little bit more or it could be a little bit less. After a bit, the whole layer starts getting a lot more fluffy and easier to move around and mix. And in some ways, it reminds me of digging in compost into your garden bed. And one of the big advantages of doing a base in this way is cost. Even my couple of square meters here, if I bought bagged MOT type one, enough to fill 100 mil thick, it's gonna cost me 50 to 60 pounds to fill just this area. Whereas using cement like this, I did the whole lot for half a bag of cement, which is maybe two pound 50 to three pounds. So a huge significant saving. And it also meant that I didn't have to find somewhere to dump all of this soil, which in a standard garden is quite difficult to get rid of, or you end up taking multiple tips to the recycling center just to dump it there. Because of the good weather recently, the soil is a little bit dry at the moment. So I just add a small amount of water just to ensure the cement can carry out its chemical reaction. When it comes to the amount of water needed, you don't need very much. The more water you put in, the less strength you're gonna get out of the cement, and it's gonna take so much longer to cure and dry out as well. So my recommendation is to use as little water as possible, just enough to make the cement go from light gray to dark gray, and that means it's gonna do its job. As well as making these two bases either side of the green wall for two barrels, I'm also putting one course of blocks across the front for a timber garden sleeper to sit on to make a little bit of a raised bed between it and the green wall. So the intention is along here, I'm just putting one soldier course of blocks in. On the left hand side, I do exactly the same for my second barrel and any soil that I've dug up, I heap into the middle, which is where the raised bed is gonna go, which saves me taking away soil and then bringing it back to the raised bed. Now, once I put the garden sleepers in, it's gonna be half full and it means at least I found somewhere to lose that material. And as I said before, in this area, I'm not really looking for strength. A car is never gonna run over these blocks. And even the barrels or me walking on them is a very, very light load. So it's not really strength that I'm looking for. All I'm making sure, just underneath the blocks, I haven't got material that's gonna expand when it freezes. I end up heaving and making the whole lot look uneven which will give longevity to these bases. And I'm expecting these to look exactly the same in five or 10 years as they do once I'm finished now. I thought I'd experiment with using even a higher percentage of cement. So I've made a 25 millimeter or one inch high frame so I can add accurately a 25 millimeter layer of cement to my soil, which I'm gonna to try to mix with exactly 100 millimeters or four inches of soil. So I overdig the same size hole as the frame, 
and then put a layer of sand at the bottom which I level off which means that when I'm digging down if the sand comes up I know that I've over dug it's going to give me some sort of reference for how deep I'm actually digging and mixing the soil and cement together. Once the sand is in and leveled I put in some level pins and a piece of tape exactly four inches off of the top of the sand. With this in place I can backfill again up to that level so I know that between the sand and the top I've now got exactly four inches of soil. And if I then fill the frame to the top with cement I know that I've got an inch of cement sitting on exactly four inches of soil before I get down to the sand. Once again this is only really a rough experiment but you know building and civil engineering is like this it's not an exact science and there's so many variables to do this perfectly doesn't really replicate what the average DIY or builder is ever going to do on site. Once again the soil is so dry that I do add some water but I'm trying not to add too much and make it into a big mush because it's just going to lose strength and take a lot longer to cure. With it well mixed and leveled off I use my hand tamper to compact it and the sand you now see on the surface I actually came off the bottom of the tamper rather than coming up out the ground so I clear off the rest of the sand and continue to compact. So it's now been two full days since I mixed my cement soil in this area so let's have a look of how it's turned out. So this has started to get some strength although it's only two days old and anything made out of cement generally gets most of its strength in the first couple of months so this is just going to go harder and harder and it's definitely not concrete but then we're not looking for concrete it's quite solid it's sort of like been baked in the sun but I know that if I mix that with water it's not going to turn back into mud. But then you have to remember I'm trying to replicate type 1 or hardcore here rather than concrete. If you want concrete you need to put a lot more cement in. But And the main thing here is not necessarily strength because just by putting a few blocks on here I don't need strength but what I do want it to do is not to heave through the freeze thaw cycle and also not to go all mushy when it gets wet and now it's mixed with cement it's not going to do that it's actually quite firm. Now content wise this was 10 or 15 millimeters of cement mixed with around about 100 millimeters of soil. I'm not going for strength here I'm just going for longevity and a lack of heave. Let's go and have a look at the other sample where I actually mixed 25 millimeters of cement with 100 millimeters of soil and see how that's turned out. So it's been two or three days since I laid this. I just put this on the top so I know exactly what the area is because I must admit it all looks pretty much the same after a bit. Okay, and that's obviously somewhat firmer than the soil around it. Let's see if we can dig it up. Oh, well that's good to see. At least I can see an edge there. Look. definitely different to the ground around it that's for sure. Ah, there you go. Oh, wow. And that is my lump of cement soil. So let's just see what it looks like inside, shall we? Oh. 
I think I was being a bit over optimistic thinking that this was going to be harder than it is after only two or three days. Even normal concrete after a couple of days doesn't have that much strength, near enough, just enough to hold itself together. And you can see it's really dark and it's still damp and it smells really cement like. It smells like a building site and that means that it's still going through its curing process. And as that dries out, and cures then it's only going to get harder and harder over the next number of weeks and months but I can assess roughly how hard that's going to become and how strong that's going to become because on my original cube I use the same percentage of cement that's four parts soil and one part cement and the first thing you can see is the color this is a lot lighter although it's exactly the same as this it's just now this is about two and a half three weeks old and you can see that this is still very very soft but eventually it will become like this where this is a lot harder in fact it's like a weak concrete it's a bit like a lean mixed concrete which you can get through but it's way harder than you need if you're going to replace type one with this material. So my conclusion is 25 millimeters of cement mixed with 100 mil of soil, making a sort of four to one, is too much. So definitely I think I would aim at more 10 or 15%. That means the cement goes further and the whole thing just is a lot cheaper as well. Anyway, after 28 days, I'll get a strength calculation on this and this one by putting it through my crushing machine so I can get some proper feedback on the strengths of these samples, which also means I can compare them with other materials. But that's something that my patrons will get to see in around about a month's time. If you want to know how I got on with the rest of the block work and the raised bed, that video will be out in a couple of weeks time. And I hope I've given you some ideas on mixing cement with soil that could save you effort and money. I will see you next time.